Well, it's Tech for Hire. I believe he's going to bore us again with his bullshit. Warning. Tech for Hire is an internet personality and is not a certified mechanic. Please consult a licensed professional before attempting what you are about to view. Tech for Hire is not responsible for any damages or loss of life. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another video. Um, before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe to the video, to my channel, because um, I need them. It would help. Anyways, so what am I doing today? Well, I have a 2021 Telluride, new to me. Not brand new, but it's new to me. And um, it has a great sound system. I really enjoy the sound system. A lot of people crap on it, but... Um, Maybe it's because I'm, you know, 40 years old and my ears aren't that great, but sounds good to me. Uh, the only thing that I notice it's lacking, uh, bass. It doesn't have a lot of bass. Um, the stereo goes up to 30, you know, volume-wise, and around 10 to 12, you have a good sounding bass, but there's no push to it. You know, it's, it, it just, it all sounds artificial because the subwoofer that's in here is very, very small. And the subwoofer is over there, right there. Um, it looks like it's a um, shallow mount uh, subwoofer. So it's, you know, it's, it's not that great. I think maybe an eight inch, it could be a six inch. Um, but low, low sound, it, it sounds good. But once you start cranking up the, the volume, you kind of lose something. So what are we gonna be doing today? Well, I'm going to add two Q-Class eight inch woofers and made a little um, shelf here. I'm gonna be adding an amplifier. So how do you do that? How do you do that to a factory system? Um, that is a good question. And um, this will actually be my first time doing it. Um, I've installed tons, and I mean tons, of amplifiers and subwoofers into systems, but never into a factory system. My last uh, car was a Kia, and I had them wire it because I just didn't want to do it. This time, I'm going to do it because the shop that I normally go to, they want $220 to do it. And um, I'm a pretty smart guy. I'm sure I can figure this out. Um, one of the first things that you're gonna need, uh, aside from patience, is a line out converter. Let me flip this around, line out converter. Now, um, you can buy all of these. There's really cheap ones. Um, the place where I get all of my equipment from, they gave me, um, where is it? Um, this one, this line out converter. Um, I could go with that and it probably would have been perfectly fine. I mean, they throw these into cars all over the place. Um, let me pull this out. That way you can get a good idea. I haven't pulled the, the kicker one out. Um, God, this is hard to do with one hand. Probably edit that out. Okay, so you have this, this device here, okay? So you have your two RCAs, and then you have all of these connections. And if you actually read them, it is um, basically to attach to your speaker wire. So figure your rear signal of your um, car. It's going to take um, left positive negative and right positive negative. Um, now on the Telluride, I could do that. I could do left and right, um, but it already has a subwoofer. So I want low signals going to this because what, what this essentially does is this takes all the high frequency and all that good stuff and channels it down to one low frequency RCA. So you can plug it into your amp and it's for you know, um, low signal. Well, we already have a sub, so why don't you just use the signal coming off of that because it's already receiving a low signal. Um, you still need one of these to connect the amp, but I'm going the kicker route. Um, they're the same price, surprisingly. This was about 25 bucks. I think this one was 22, 23. Um, what's the difference? Well, this one, it's tuned to, I believe, 20 hertz to 200 hertz. So you're not gonna get any signal 
above that. So I kind of like that because it keeps me from getting high signals to my subwoofer or to my amp. Um, the other feature that I really like about this one is this has a, uh, a remote wire output. So if you're running your amp, you know, you run your amp, you're going to have to have power, ground, and then a remote wire. And that remote wire sends a signal all the, or receives a signal all the way back from the stereo saying, hey, I'm turning on, turn on the amp. Okay, now there's people that do all sorts of different tips and tricks to, to get that. I mean, it all involves pretty much running a single wire from the front of the car all the way to the back where the amp is. Well, I don't have to do that because with this little guy, I can pull the wiring. Um, it also has a, uh, a negative. Um, it's got a ground wire. So that should also further help eliminate any of the signal noise that you may get through the speaker wire or through the vehicle, anything like that. So um, you should get a nice, clean, crystal clear signal. Um, now with this car, the question is, where do you mount it? Do I do the back speakers? If you have a uh, S or um, I really don't know the lower model types because I know the S, then there's the EX and then the SX, I don't know if there's one in between, um, but I know there's some models, I believe the S, that doesn't have, uh, it has the six speaker sound system. I don't know if that includes a subwoofer. Um, if it does, then you're in the same boat, you can just plug into the same spot that I'm at. Um, if it doesn't have a subwoofer, then you're gonna actually have to pull uh, signal wires coming from your left rear speaker and your right rear speaker. I mean, technically you can do it from the front, it doesn't matter, it just needs to receive a signal. Um, but I think it's just easier to just pull it from the back. Now, um, let me switch around here. Okay, excuse my dirty um, area. Okay, so as you know, the subwoofer's here, and if you lift up this guy, I put my netting back here, it looks like the, the wires for the subwoofer are right here but I'm only gonna know that um, until I peel them back and I actually check you know, up here. But what I do plan on doing is I have to remove this entire panel because I have to run the RCAs and all that stuff down and up through here. Why? Because I'm also installing a base knob. So um, let me fix my thing, hopefully the volume was good. Now the base knob, this guy, has two sets of RCAs, input and output. So where are you gonna put your base knob? Generally, you wanna put it where you can reach it, right? So that means I do have to run RCAs all the way up to the front and all the way to the back. So that's gonna be my project for today. Most likely, um, the back seats, these back seats are gonna have to come out because um, I noticed that there is a, in order to take this unit out, there's a screw right down here somewhere and you can't you can't get to it so i'm going to try my best not to break things and um i will probably do updated uh, little mini videos uh throughout the process i'll probably l still lump them all into one um video but um yeah let's get to it all right ladies and gentlemen here's update number one all right progress I've taken out my speaker box that was already in there. Uh, I took out the amp, and um, now I'm in the process of removing the rear, the third row seats. So I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I took this panel off with a simple skid underneath there with your fingers and pull up a little bit. Not very hard, just enough to, to free it. And then you're gonna peel um, the rubber um, weather stripping back just a little bit so that way you can get it all the way up. Now the reason why you want to do that is this panel has this little tab. So you got to undo that screw so that way you can fully get this out. Um, I took off the rear cup holder here thinking maybe there might have been like a connection to the USB that I have to get to but so far I haven't seen anything. Um, there is wiring back here. I just didn't see a, a feel a plug. Um, now the rear seat. You have one, two, three, four, five and then there's six, seven, eight 
14 millimeter screws that you have to remove. Once you remove those, she's ready to come out. So I can't lift it one-handed because I'm weak. So I just wanted to get you to that step because um, uh, next part is I'm gonna completely remove the rear seat, take that out, and then I'll start on that panel. So if there's any more um, little things to look out for, you'll see on the next part of the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've gone um, a little closer to getting this thing installed. Um, revelation time. I did find that uh, the one cable that I pointed to that like went down, yeah, don't, don't, don't use that as your um, subwoofer connection because it's not a subwoofer connection. Let me show you. Alrighty, this is what she looks like. Here is the panel. Um, it is not as bad as it looks um, in difficulty. You just, again, have to be patient. So, um, as you know, we had the one connection here that I showed you. There's uh, one there, one there, and another one right there. You have to take off the passenger kick panel to be able to show it. And then what you have to do is you have to remove seat belt, seat belt, and then all of it can be pulled off. Um, as you're pulling it off, you'll tend to go, oh my God, I'm gonna break it, I'm gonna break it. Yeah, I almost felt that way. But, you know, just light tugs. Um, I started mainly like here, um, gave it a good pull. As you can see from here, you have tab connection, tab connection, tab connection, 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 there, 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 there. Mm, there's another spot. Um, the only thing I had to disconnect um, for the wiring was this wiring here, this cluster, and that was right here. So very easy to do, three little connections. There was nothing up front. So that USB box that's right here actually runs all the way back and is this connection right there. So that's actually kind of cool because that doesn't stop you from actually pulling anything out. So now that we look at this, um, we can see here that this is the subwoofer, this piece right here. Um, I'm going to tap into these wires. I have to figure out what the wiring is because there's actually, this appears to be a dual voice coil. So it's got um, two lefts and two rights. So I'm gonna have to figure out what that wiring is and um, tap into them and then we can, um, oops, I wasn't doing the video right. Um, tap into these here. Uh, once I figure out what those are, I can get into those and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, on to the next step. Hey guys and gals, update number two. All right, I think I just did the probably the most difficult part of this whole install, at least for me, is making sure the wiring is correct. So, what do we have? So, here is our um, line out converter. I have yet to do the remote and the um, uh, ground, but this is the subwoofer connection and it is a dual voice coil. So we have coil one and coil two. Coil one is orange and green, and coil two is blue and red. Now the green wire on coil one is positive, and orange is negative. So again, green is positive, orange is negative. Now on the second coil, the blue wire is positive, let me get down here. The blue wire is positive and the red wire is negative. Why they made the red wire negative, I don't know what to tell you. But this is the most hardest part for me, okay? And um, you can see here, I did some shrink wrap. Of course, I messed up on this one and put the shrink wrap up here instead of down here. So when I went to do it, it, it didn't work. So my plan is to mount this somewhere up here um, that way I can run the RCAs down through the back. The RCAs will run right down in here. Um, but I'll mount this here probably with some Velcro or something. That way if I have to remove it, I can. Um, ground wire will probably be, um, I'll extend the wire a little bit and probably do a self tap up here or something. You know, scratch up the paint a little bit and put it there. Um, and then the um, remote wire will go around the back 
and I'll have it come out here because the amp wires are going to be right down here somewhere. So that's the update. Um, I'm on the home stretch, I think. Um, the next hardest part is running the power wire through the firewall, um, but that's universal. You know, you just got to find a good spot and run it through there. I got to run the RCAs up to the front. So game time. All right, update number three. I am done. Um, I had a few complications. Uh, it appears that my amp is going out, at least one of the channels. So um, I did record quite a bit of stuff just because I was spending most of my time troubleshooting, but um, the earlier videos that I did, the wiring, that's all good. Um, one thing to note though, um, it was kind of weird, is um, I'm used to aftermarket stereos where you put the remote wire on a remote connection, which is usually attached to the ignition, and um, your amp is only on when you turn the ignition to either accessory or on, right? Well, with this, when you unlock your door, when you open the trunk, the light's on. So if you can see here, this is on. And um, that was causing me a little bit of confusion because I had to figure out why it was on and why the light was still on and why it was still getting power and why do I have power going through, through speaker wires, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then when I first hooked it up, it sounded like garbage. Um, so, uh, I, but that was more to do with the amp than with the wiring that I did. So um, I found out one of the channels through my amp is not working. Um, and that creates a problem um, the way I had it wired. So, um, you know, with my speakers, so with my subs. So I had to change my sub wiring so that it matched up. But it actually sounds really good and it's super freaking loud. Um, but my only concern is that because it's the way it's wired right now, I think I'm pulling 0.5 ohms. Um, instead of two ohms, which is supposed to be on there, which could be why my amp is overheating, because um, the amp is only stable at two ohms. I have a kicker um, uh, amplifier that I've been laying around, a Q-series, so I may use that to match it with my Q-series subs. Um, I'm just waiting on a part, um, one of the, uh, it doesn't matter, I'm waiting on a part for it. Um, when I do that, I'll switch, you know, this old Alpine out and get that one in there. But, um, as you can see, everything is back in there. Subs fit in there good. Um, the amp is mounted there. I have all of the wiring routed inside of here. Um, all the panels are back in. It's, it's beautiful. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, if you guys have any questions, any comments, any concerns, feel free. Shoot them down below. Um, but also don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.